Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Let's get started. So, the other day, I was minding my own business, just trying to get a health assessment on our little 283 behind me. So I grabbed a starter off the shelf, shoved it in the starter hole, got a battery, powered it all up, basically gave it some juice, and all I heard was whirr. And I went, oops. So what had happened was I got the wrong starter for my application. And you think, well, it's a small block Chevy. So what's the deal? What gives? Right before our very eyes, I have four small block Chevy starters and they're all different. Let's get right after it and figure out what we're looking at, what makes them different, and hopefully steer you in the right direction when you're trying to get a starter for your project because it has to match the other parts that you may be assembling or already have. So all four of these starters function in the same basic way. They all spin the motor over by engaging the gear in the starter with the ring gear that is on your flex plate or your flywheel that is bolted to your crankshaft to spin the motor. And that is the biggest source of confusion. The two most commonly confused starters are right here. One is made for the 153 tooth flywheel or flex plate and the other is made for the 168 tooth flywheel or flex plate. 168 tooth, 153 tooth. What does that mean and how do I know? Well, I know by looking at it. Now I can tell is the starter bolt holes on the 153 tooth flywheel or flex plate are next to each other. The bolt holes on the 168 tooth flywheel or flex plate starter has offset holes. Let's take a look at what that means. Here is a 168 tooth flywheel. A flywheel has a clutch for a manual transmission, a flex plate, the automatic transmission's torque converter bolts directly to that. This is a flywheel. It has been labeled 168 tooth because that is indeed confusing. But if you look, I believe, we are in the neighborhood, you could look it up, but it's 14 inches roughly, give or take, for 168 tooth flywheel. The diameter is what requires the offset. We're gonna get into this in just a minute, but most blocks are drilled for both starters until you get early enough where the block wasn't drilled for a starter at all. And that's when you need the guy on the end, but we'll get to that. Looking at the 153 tooth flex plate, not flywheel, for an automatic transmission, you can see that the diameter is just under 13. I think it's supposed to measure at 12 and three quarter, but don't quote me on that. The point is it's over an inch less in diameter than our 168 tooth flywheel or flex plate. So why is this so complicated? I, I don't know, but here's the thing. I would say always go with your stock setup. If you get the casting numbers on your motor and you're keeping a stock transmission or similar one to it, there's no reason to change the diameter of the flex plate or flywheel. Now, people on the internet disagree with that. I'm not really sure what advantages they're certain they're going to get out of it. I don't understand. I know that one of the common ones when it comes to a flywheel is they think if they go to 168 tooth, they can put on a larger clutch, which is True, but for your application, probably not necessary. So before you go changing from 153 tooth that you have stock to 168 tooth to get more clutch surface, do some research and make sure that your new starter is not gonna hit your old bell housing because that's a thing. And I can't even begin to say what applications will do that when. It's just gotta be aware. So because Chevrolet made two different size slash, most importantly, diameter ring gears, there are two different starter setups. So if you know your ring gear size, well, you'll be able to choose the correct starter setup. If you do what I did, and you put a 168 tooth starter on a 153 tooth setup, it won't do anything. The starter will spin, but not engage anything. 
because it's floating over a half inch away from where it should be. On the other hand, if you try to bolt up 153 tooth starter to 168 tooth flywheel, you're just, it's just not gonna work. You're gonna crash right one right into the other. Now, in order to solve this problem, this is the new thing. This is a high torque, high torque mini starter. And you can see it has two sets of holes. The outer two holes are 168 tooth. The inner two holes slide the thing in and, wait, vice versa? I don't know. I just confused myself. The short version is it's got two sets of holes. One for 153 tooth and one for 168 tooth. Now this is a very cheap eBay unit and did nothing but grind up both sets of, you know, ring gear teeth. If you're gonna buy one of these, it might be a good thing to spend the extra money. They're way more expensive at a reputable dealer, Summit, Speedway, Jags, you name it. But at least if it starts eating your ring gear, you can call and say, hey dummies, this is a piece of trash. And maybe they'll send you another one because eBay will not do that. Now, still an oddball down at this end. This is an early small block starter. You will notice the most important thing about this one that sets it apart from all of these is the bolt holes to mount the starter are on the nose cone. This does not bolt to the block. This bolts to the bell housing. What bell housing, you say? Well, 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 well. It's certainly the Tri-5 bell housings. It's my understanding bell housings up until 61 or 62 also took starter bolt things there. What's debated hotly on the internet, as I tried to do my research before recording this episode, is when did Chevrolet start using a block mounted starter instead of a bell housing mounted starter? And I don't know. Some people say it's as early as 58. Some people say it's as late as 62. So if you are hunting for a pre 327 motor, 265 Chevrolet or a 283 Chevrolet, you need to do your research to find out if it actually has holes in the block to mount the starter. I don't know exactly what year it started. This is a later 283. I think it's a 65 motor and it is indeed drilled for a starter to go into the block. So that's the situation we have over there. The 54 Chevrolet in the garage has a 1957 Chevrolet bell housing on the back of the 283 and uses a starter similar to this one. Let's just go, let's recap. I'm trying to keep this guy short. Two main different kinds of starters. 153 tooth with the parallel holes, 168 tooth with the offset holes, high torque mini starter with both sets aftermarket, and then finally your early, early Chevrolet starter with the three holes that mount to the bell housing. That's about as simple as I can possibly make it for starter choices for your small block Chevy. There's high torque, there's standard torque, there's other things in the mix, but the most important thing about will it fit so that you can actually try to start your car are these different bolt patterns. Anyway, thanks for watching Between the Sharks. Good luck on your projects. Now that I have all these starters, I'm gonna take the right one Put it in this motor and we're going to do a compression check. So we'll see you next time when that happens. Hopefully it's good. It's a Craigslist motor. The guy said it was good. Um, we gambled. Let's see if we're going to win. All right. See you next time on Between the Sharks.